Okay, hello and welcome to the New Food Hub. I'm Billy Nichols. I'm a content creator here at the New Food Hub, and I'm joined today by the wonderful Colette Fox. She is head of programs at ProVeg UK's School Plates program. Uh, now, the School Plates program empowers schools to champion plant-based meals in their canteens, helping schools across the UK to improve the health of their pupils, save money, and help the planet all at the same time. So let's tuck into all the details of this program now. Um, Colette, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start with the basics. Um, can you please give us a brief introduction to the School Plates programme and its progress to date? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, thanks for having me. So first of all, just to say we're an evidence-based programme. Everything we do is based on um, evidence that, that this works. Um, essentially, we're trying to get healthier and more planet-friendly food into schools. And that means reducing the meat content. It means increasing the uptake of veggie meals that are already on school menus and then introducing new plant-based dishes. Um, and we do this through behavioral nudges. So predominantly that we kind of begin with changing language of dishes and positioning of dishes. So we are removing negative language, things like meat-free, um, vegetarian, vegan, things that are seen as being very niche and not applying to the kind of mass population. Um, and then we're replacing those words. We're using indicators on dishes instead of the words vegan or vegetarian. And we're really making that language colourful. So we're focusing on the taste, the texture, the provenance of the food to really sell the dish. Um, and we're also trying to get those dishes at the top of the menu um, and ideally in time to be that default option because we know dishes at the top of the menu get chosen more often than the dishes underneath. Um just a little bit about our progress. We started in 2018 uh, with one local authority partner in the UK. And six years on, we are working with um, a quarter of all the local authorities in the UK, which is about 6,300 schools, over a million meals a day that we're influencing. Um, and we've so far swapped over 12 million meals from meat-based to meat-free or plant-based. So it seems to be working, which is good. <laughs> wow sounds like a brilliant campaign and yeah impressive results to date um but let's talk about schools why did you choose to promote plant-based catering in schools specifically um i think children are an obvious choice because we can influence um and get them into good eating behaviors for years to come which will kind of impact their long-term health outcomes and obviously impact our planet's health um we saw school food as just a massive opportunity to be honest um it's the biggest chunk of public sector catering food provision. It makes up about 45% of public sector catering in the UK. Um, just to give that some context, hospitals, which often get mentioned and are extremely important as well, make up about 11% of public sector catering. So it's the biggest um, chunk that we can influence. Um, and there's about 1.2 billion school meals served in the UK every year. So about 6 million meals a day. Um, also nobody else was doing it and still nobody else is doing it there's lots of brilliant school food organizations but nobody that's completely dedicated to meat reduction and increasing plant-based so that's our our job in the sector wow thank you yeah those, those numbers certainly <laughs> sound very compelling um well i'd love to hear as well you've been going for a few years now um maybe give me one or two of your main achievements or successes that you're most proud of yeah, I, I was having a think about this. I mean, all of it, to be honest, because it's it's just evolved. We've listened to what our partners need and we've responded. So that's how the program has kind of come about. But I think probably the scale and the impact of of you know the scale of where we're working um, and the impact that we're having, those numbers and the the children that we're reaching is probably one of the things that we're almost proud of. Um, I think. The, our award scheme, which is the newest sort of strand of the School Plates programme, which we introduced in January, has been a bit of a game changer um, because it's given a much clearer structure and a kind of path of progression for school caterers. So they know exactly what actions they've completed and where they're going and where we're, we're rewarding them. Um, you know, quite tangibly, they get a, a badge that goes on their menus and we publicise it in the press, what they've achieved. So that's been... Um, uh, not only to kind of recognise what school caterers are doing and the great job they're doing, but it's also really encouraging them to do those actions a little bit more quickly because they want to get to their next award. So that's been um, fantastic. And just really quickly, one other thing is we've just introduced our School Plates Network um, in October. 
And that is an opportunity for the first time. But now we have lots of partners. We brought them all together once a quarter to share what their, you know, their successes are, what their challenges are and support one another. So it's a kind of peer to peer network. And actually to see that in action with, you know, over 50 people on the call is just like we've we're really making great progress and they can now help one another because they're they're doing this work. They don't just need to hear it from us. I want them to hear it from each other that, you know, what they're doing and what's working. So those are probably the the, the things that are at the moment, the, the biggest successes, I'd say. Brilliant. Yeah, certainly sounds like a lot to be proud of. Um, and you've mentioned a few of the things you do already. You work with um, uh, Nudge Theory. You do this awards program as well. Um, yeah. Are there any other main services that you offer to schools uh, that you'd like to highlight that uh, encourage and empower them to provide more plant-based food in their canteens? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the award scheme that I mentioned, um, th- that's the kind of the the cornerstone, if you like, of what we do. So we encourage any school caterer to send their menu to us and we'll review it and we'll review it against our kind of um, evidence based criteria. So absolutely, that's the first um, point. We also do recipe development, plant based recipe development. We have a recipe book online, which you can download at proveg.com. Uh, we offer training in person and online. Um, actually how to make the recipes and what to do and we take feedback on that and we will create recipes if they're needed by schools and again like I mentioned this peer-to-peer support so um, I would encourage anybody who's kind of curious have a look at the website we've got a a school plate section we've got a, a guide to how the program works with all the evidence we've got the recipes and we have the awards handbook just to kind of give you a flavor of the free services that are on offer and anybody can take us up on those mm, yeah thank you sounds like a, a really wide array of stuff um and i guess on that point uh for people who might be uh interested in this work but perhaps don't have the resources or the expertise that that you have in your uh years working on this project um what would you say are in your experience uh, the most effective strat- strategies that caterers can employ to increase their plant-based offerings at schools yeah i think that's a really good question um I think uh, make small changes. Don't try and overhaul menus in one go. Just make small changes, get them accepted and build on those. Really important. Um, Don't underestimate the power of these behavioural nudges that we talk about. Sometimes we talk to caterers and they're a bit sceptical about, you know, if we change the name of the dish, is that actually going to make a difference? It really makes a difference. So by just making it sound more attractive, you know, when we go out to eat in a restaurant, everything is described beautifully. If it was really plain and boring, we probably wouldn't, we might go for something else. So it really works on our psychology. Um, And I think, you know, look at your most popular dishes would be a a tip um, and try and work out how those can be made plant-based because if they're popular, typically they'll be popular as a plant-based version too in our experience. And I think making sure whoever is making the food, your caterers, your food service um, staff are on board. That's super important because if they're not, they're not going to be great ambassadors to your customers. So again, we focus on with schools, with the school caterers, they're our, they're our key audience. If we get them on board, they'll kind of sell that and be enthusiastic to the children. And likewise, in whatever sector, you know, listeners are in, I would say that's key. You've got to get got, get your team behind it. Brilliant. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of small things schools can do to make pretty big gains. So that's that's exciting to hear. One last question mm-hmm. on your methods. Um, a lot of the work that you do seems to revolve around education. You, you do work in schools after all. Uh, how important is it to provide chefs, consumers and other relevant groups with education on the benefits and practicalities of plant based food? Um, in a in a word, really important. Um you know, people are at different places with their knowledge. Um, they don't need to know a great deal in order to do this. But with something we always ask when we're training, very first thing is understanding how they kind of feel about plant-based food, what they think about it, get all those, you know, get it all out in the open at the start. And then we can judge where they are on that path. Are they, do they, you know, they really hate it? Do they love it? Are they kind of doing a little bit of it? Have they tried plant-based food? And then we can sort of work with that. Um, I think people are often quite surprised or shocked at the impact food has. They're not aware of, for example, the impact it has on uh, the planet, you know, the, the percentage of emissions it, it makes up and the impact it has on what, on our, our health. So 
that's um, always good to kind of share those facts. Um, and I think food is, you know, it's a contentious subject. People don't like being told what to eat, but actually it's the one thing we control every day if we're lucky three times a day. So we can make a difference with what we choose. Um, yeah, I, I, and I think it's about us, everybody doing what they can. So if that means going fully plant-based, amazing. If it means having one day a week, that's great too. We just kind of, you know, we're happy for everybody to do whatever they feel they, they can do as long as it's kind of moving in the right direction. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Um, let's talk about some of the challenges that you face. This is a really big and ambitious campaign, and I'm sure working to change school catering specifically comes with its own unique set of challenges and considerations. Uh, what are some of the main challenges you face so far and how have you sought to overcome them? So um, first thing I would say is, yes, there are challenges. Um, school caterers are incredibly busy. That's the number one thing. They are often firefighting. They are short staffed. They don't have the right ingredients that they need for their menus. They're just you know, trying to get food out to kids basically that is their number one priority so we aren't their number one priority so we've had to kind of realize that this is something um uh you know additional to their day however it can help their day and it can help what they're putting out um so that's probably number one i think there's also you know they have the best of intentions they want to feed children a nutritious meal and maybe they sometimes feel that a plant-based option is not going to do that or the kids won't like it they won't eat it it will get wasted so i think those are probably um you know there's there's lots of other kind of myths about expense taste difficult to make all those sorts of things but i think the most important thing is they they want to be reassured that kids are going to eat the food and they're going to enjoy it and they'll get they'll get fed because a lot of them this is their their main meal of the day um so tasting is super important when we're doing our training we want them you know we want the chefs to to taste the food but we also then want them to create these dishes and get kids to taste them before they before they go on the menu so that they can be reassured everybody's reassured that the food is great and it's going to be eaten so yeah that they can all be overcome but um yeah we are mindful of the challenges that they face yeah absolutely um i'm really interested to know as well What's the general reaction you receive from schools and parents and the pupils themselves uh, when you implement your plant forward changes? Um, yeah, mostly I would say like 98, 99% really positive. Um, our partners are continuing to add more and more plant based dishes to their menus. So that must be working. They wouldn't be doing it if kids weren't eating the food. Um, I think I'm always amazed, and especially when I started at ProVeg, I thought this would be quite a difficult sell and it isn't um you know caterers are really open to change but they just need a bit of a helping hand they need to know they've got an ally in us that we're there to you know support them through the journey i suppose um and just in terms of um the the shift that we're seeing we've been starting to collect data from our um, school partners and we are starting to see you know, a bit of a trend that that meat consumption is dropping through what we're doing and plant-based consumption is increasing. So around sort of 10 to 25% shift in behaviours. We're, we're, it's an ongoing project and it's a big piece of work, but the early sort of signals are showing it's definitely working. Kids are accepting the food and they're, and it's increasing. So that's what we're here to do. So that's that's great. It's really exciting to hear. Um, I've got one more question on a UK specific context as well. You work in the UK um, and the UK has a set of school food standards that currently require the provision of meat and poultry three times a week and dairy every day. Um, so how do you navigate these regulations and do you think they should change? Good question. Um, so the school food standards actually just apply to England. Each of the four nations in the UK has their own standards, but they are similar. Um, so in England, yeah, they have to serve um, meat three times a week and dairy every day. We would love to see that mandatory requirement go um, as long as kids are getting a healthy, balanced, nutritious meal. Uh, let the caterers decide what that looks like and uh, have more plant you know, options in there. Um, we do try and connect with the Department for Education who set the, the standards and we do have a dialogue with them. Um, so, yeah, we're just kind of trying to let them know what's happening in reality and that 
schools and school caterers want to do more. They want to go further than the standards allow. So I'm hopeful perhaps when we get a new government that that might change and we might see an update. But I think the important thing is there's still a lot we can do within the standards as they are. So um, that it, it would still allow schools to have um, two meat-free days, although we don't like to call them meat-free days. So not serving meat, um, they can do that. And they could have a plant-based option every day. That's perfectly acceptable. And they could have that as their default option as they want. So in encouraging it to get chosen more often and things like, you know, you could have all your desserts fully plant-based. So there's loads of room for change still, but we could go much further if the, if we didn't have those restrictions. Yeah, thank you for that answer and, and that clarification as well. Um, okay, last few questions. Um, firstly, you're doing great work in schools in the UK. Um, I'd love to know, are there other organisations doing similar things internationally? Uh, and if not, are there opportunities for this programme to be replicated in other countries? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yes, there's lots of organisations doing similar work. Um, so many so, in fact, that this year, this summer, we launched a new initiative called the Global Plant-Based School Food Network. Um, and it's for, for those organisations, whether they are NGOs, whether they're volunteer led, whether it's government departments in other countries, we bring everybody together um, to kind of share our experiences. We're all working in the same space. We want to share what's working. Um, and we've got over 30 countries in that network so far, um, many with multiple organisations. So, you know, we might have volunteer representatives, government representatives. So it's a great um opportunity to see what's going on and of course we've got lots of cultural differences around the world we're in gazillion time zones with the network ranging from us to japan um south america every you know we've, we've got great representation um but there's loads of similarities and actually we're already starting to connect people together or they're starting to sort of self-connect where they can see they can help one another out so that's kind of the whole point of it um, and absolutely that it can be replicated. So it's just about us understanding what the, you know, what the cultural situation is, what kind of food ingredients are available, how it works, and then applying the learnings of all of us to help people to do that. Um, and we're, you know, we would love other organizations to join that network. I'm going to be speaking about this at COP28 in the next couple of weeks and encouraging other countries to get involved and help us kind of together accelerate this pace of change more quickly. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and to close things out, um, you've been running this campaign for a while now, you must have got a lot of experience in this role. Uh, what key pieces of advice would you give to organisations or individuals looking to promote plant-based initiatives in public catering systems? Yeah, I think a uh, kind of classic pro-veg um, approach is our kind of progress over perfection. I think that's really important. So just get started if you can and evolve as you learn. This is what we do. We do it all the time. We make mistakes, but that's fine. We learn from them. Um, look at what others around you are doing. So if you're not working in schools, look at what your, um, you know, those who are doing similar work are doing and what can you learn from them. Um, look at what the evidence tells us because um, that's usually right. I'd really recommend um, the, the kind of main piece of research that we started out with with our programme and it has evolved hugely and there's lots more evidence out there now which again backs this up but the World Resources Institute have a playbook for guiding diners towards um, plant-rich um, dishes is a brilliant starting point again applies across all, all food um, situations um, and I think if, if anyone you're trying to convince in a setting is maybe sceptical, make them the food, get them some great plant-based food to try, because that is usually the thing that clinches it. And people are like, oh, gosh, yeah, I didn't realise it was so tasty. Or maybe they've had a bad experience. So get people to try the food. That's really important. And if anybody out there is struggling, um, needs a chat, get in touch. That's fine, too. Wonderful. Thank you for that advice. Um, it's been really great to have you on the new Food Hub and thank you so much for your time and your hard work on this project. I'd like to look to the future. How do you envision the future of school canteens in terms of plant-based offerings? Um, so for us, specifically at ProVeg and the UK, um, our goal is to be working with 50% of local authorities in the next two years. So that's double where we are now. Um, we want to spread this knowledge um, around the world. 
Uh, we want to learn. We want, you know, we want to learn from others. We're not saying we're the absolute experts. We're not, um, you know, and just understand that public sector catering is a huge, has a huge role to play in food systems change. So I think it, um, globally, governments spend about 70% of their spending on public sector catering on schools. So, um, yeah, we just need to keep keep doing what we're doing and keep moving things in this direction. Colette Fox, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Billy. My pleasure.